time for another one of these weird videos where I wax lyrical about something for a while. So today I'm going to ask you to imagine what if we went back to text? And I was thinking about this as another one of these sort of shower thoughts I have. And I was thinking, you know, I've wanted this for a very long time. And that would be a world where we could just operate all we wanted all the time from a text command prompt slash text user interface world. So no GUIs, no bitmapped graphics, no rasterization, nothing like that. Now, I know, I know that's not practical with a lot of applications from today. But imagine, if you will, going to do most of your application work in a text mode interface. If we go back in time not that long ago, relatively speaking, we look at you know the systems of our yesteryears. We'll start, start I'll start early for us, right? Go back to the you know the, the first real operating systems, I guess you had um, Unix and, and before that you had another bunch of operating systems that kind of operated on teletypes. And all they did was text. There was no graphical interface whatsoever. And in fact, the graphical interface, relatively speaking, is quite recent. It's really a product of the 1980s. And yes, of course, there was the Xerox star and a bunch of things that were imitated after that. But ultimately, the graphical user interface didn't become a commonplace until around 1983-84 when the Lisa and the Mac came out. And legend has it that Steve Jobs went to Xerox Park and he saw this device, uh, the Alto, and was so obsessed by the, the graphical user interface that he saw that he didn't see anything else. He was completely blinded by the GUI. So he just wanted to do the GUI with the Macintosh. And he didn't really think about the other things that he saw there, which was like uh, networking, Ethernet, I think it was. So he, he, he didn't even think about Ethernet and he didn't think about the applications of email and TCP and he didn't see things like object-oriented programming, all of these things that he would eventually end up using later on in his career. But imagine if the Macintosh had come out with all of that stuff in, in addition to the GUI, how powerful the Mac would have been, it would have basically been next step uh, back in 1983-84. So there is all of this to have to consider. And, and then Bill Gates came along in 85 and decided that the GUI was the future as well because he too had been blindsided by this world. But if we look across the field, everywhere else, nobody but a few were doing the graphical user interface. There was Vizion, I think that was the only other thing that I'm aware of on the microcomputer market in any case that was really doing a graphical user desktop. So the GUI became this thing. It was like a darling like AI right, at, right now is. All of those things back in the day, they weren't really that, uh, that they weren't that, that powerful, especially when they first came out, because they were pretty slow and demanding on memory and so forth. So let's go back to just before the GUI came out, everything's text. And in fact, some machines were still text for a long time. If you think about even MS-DOS, totally single tasking, desktop, uh, was only it was all text. You had some shells like DOS shells, but Windows didn't come along until Windows, uh, Windows 1 was 1985. And nobody really used it until Windows 3.0, which was in 1990. So we have this period of time where graphical desktops really didn't do an awful lot, arguably. But even fast forward to today, graphical desktops are the norm with everything, and they're very powerful, and they do a lot of things that, that we take for granted. And those things are like multitasking, because we have more than one window overlaid over the other. We have you know, more than one program running at a time, and probably if you look at your desktop or even your phone right now, it's probably running 50 applications, if not more, right? It's... Uh, there's notifications popping up all the time. There's everything vying for your attention in this wonderful, graphical, bright, colorful desktop that you're on. 
And there's plenty of you that could argue the fact that that's really useful and it makes your day more productive. But then I also put to you an argument of, is that actually as productive as we expected it to be? We expected to be multitasking and therefore our brains would suddenly be able to do two or three or four or five or ten times more than what we could do in the single tasking DOS world. Now here I'm not advocating for a single tasking system. I'm saying a multitasking system which is text based and so would only show you one or maybe two things at the same time. Think about it for a moment. If you remember how productive you could be on a terminal, even today in the Unix world where there's no other windows around you, just the terminal, you can do an awful lot. And if you imagine porting your everyday life cycle of word processing and email and all the sorts of things that you might do, spreadsheets, databases, all of that, and then turning that into a text-based application and suddenly switching off all the shiny, shiny, would you or would you not be able to get on with the task at hand easier? Now, I'm not saying you would get rid of things like copy and paste. You would still have those features, but in a text-based system. So. When you start removing all of the noise in your life, I manage to declutter quite well. And I'd, maybe it's just my fruity brain. I don't know. But once I've removed all of that clutter, I start being really productive. I can start bashing out words in a word processor really, really quickly. And then I can, if you, co if you combine all of this with the beauty of the internet today, which allows you to suck down things like APIs, then you can start to have really modern based application into your text based environment. Like even Google Docs has an API. Even uh, the weather can provide you just, uh, just the text based information that you need. You don't have to have it, a graphical representation. And I know, I know there are some things that are absolutely have to be graphical. And for that, you could potentially switch into a graphical mode temporarily. So if you wanted to watch YouTube or something like that, and of course you could do that. Or maybe you would have a separate device. And so one device would become your workhorse, your system that you used for getting real serious work done. And another one could be for your creative or your um, entertainment needs. And that could be a tablet or something, you know, less uh, powerful than your usual desktop machine. And if we have a look over into the enterprise world, IBM weren't kidding around when they designed their um, enterprise systems. And they've always been, you know, enterprise systems based. But if you look at the enterprise systems that IBM released, one sticks out to me more than most, and that is AS400. Now, I don't really know that much about AS400, but I have worked on it in the past in a small way. And all I can say is, man, that thing is rock solid. I've never known it to crash. I've seen it in large enterprise systems, in retail, um, in, in all sorts of different uses. And I've never heard anyone say it fell over. What is it? Fully text-based. There is no graphical terminal that I have seen attached to an AS400. So perhaps you can magic up a graphical terminal for it. But I've only ever seen it as a text-based system. And granted, it has more columns of text than the usual 80 by 25. And maybe that's a good thing. But ultimately, it's still a text-based system. And what do you get from that? Well, it mandates the sort of input that the users can have. There's no moving about a mouse. There's no clicking on things that they shouldn't do. And so when you're actually trying to get your staff to use a point of sale system, for example, and you want them to enter the exact information that you want them to, it's very good for doing that sort of prescriptive thing. There is one task at hand and it does it very well. You want to enter a price of something. You want to look up 
a product SKU, you want to type in a customer's details, whatever it may be, it, it just works. And you tab between the entries, name and address and all the rest. You just press tab and then you hit return on your keyboard and there's the information. It's really fast as well. I mean, granted, they're probably big servers, big mainframe <laughs> servers that sit behind these systems. But if you kind of get the feeling like it doesn't need to be slow because it's all text-based. If you look at the um, competition to things like AS400, you have things like SAP, big, hulking enterprise systems, graphical in nature, and they sit atop a graphical operating system like Windows. And then you find that you know they've got so many connections to so many objects, and all of a sudden, this big unwieldy system that cost a gazillion dollars runs like a dog. It's pretty slow. I've never seen a fast SAP system. And then on top of it, if you imagine all your other desktop applications all vying for your attention, your email and, and so forth. Imagine if we could kind of alt tab, for example, between our applications so that we just have one on the screen at a time. Maybe we could have two or three if we wanted, say, like a calculator to pop up or something like that. You remember the days of TSRs or Terminate and Stay Resident in MS-DOS, where we could have little things like Sidekick come up with a calculator or just something that was beneficial to the immediate use of the application that you were on. Those sorts of things were helpful and didn't distract. But I feel like a workflow that isn't distractive is very, very helpful. Um, and I've long since pined for an environment which was text-based that I could get on with things. And I think about all of the applications that I use today and often wonder, would it need to be graphical? Is there a particular reason that it has to be graphical? And in many cases, the answer is no. If I worked purely in the creative industry, if I did graphics, if I did multimedia, if I did videos for my living uh, like this, then I guess, yes, the answer is absolutely. I need to have a graphical workstation and I need to be able to use the mouse and the, you know, all that sort of stuff. But, you know, switch back to a lot of people's real needs, especially their working needs. And I start to think, yeah, I don't, I don't really need this. All I need is a terminal that will do the things that I need to do. So I was looking into Slack the other day. Slack's the, the enterprise um, instant messenger for workplaces. Does it need to have a graphical interface? Well, as it turns out, the answer is no. There is a CLI version that connects to the API and does, well, just about the same thing that Slack does. Um, there is many applications like Word Grinder, which replace the, um, the use of Microsoft Word on the desktop. There is now I saw Lotus 123, bless it, uh, for Linux command line, which came out just a few weeks back. Um, there's lots of different applications that you could feasibly do on the text mode interface that, for reasons unknown, they haven't been made available. But there's no reason that they couldn't be. So. My question to you is this. If you think about your workflow and the things that you do outside of kind of entertainment, would you say that most of it could be done in a text mode world? And would that be a good world for you? Or do you prefer the noise and the, 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 the multiple windows that you're vying for your attention all of the time? Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just the way that my brain works. I don't know. But more and more, I often think, gosh, I wish I could use Mutt all the time as my email client. I wish I could use um, there's something that I used to use a while back um, on my Apple II, which was connected to a Raspberry Pi. And I forget the name of it now. But basically, it was I think it was called Screeny, actually. And it allowed me to use Screen rather than Tmux, which I use these days. But used screen and they had an escape sequence you'd press like something like escape escape a or something like that and it would show you a list 
of all the applications that you're running and you could easily task switch between them, which was quite, quite a nice approach to uh, swapping between applications. And you could copy the, and especially with Tmux, you can do this today as well with Tmux, you can use the text mode um, cursor to copy and paste between applications in the command line. So the technology is all pretty much there. It's just a case of would anybody actually want to use it? So let me know in the comments or uh, hit me up in whatever way you like to do um, via email, if you like, on your text mode email client. Uh, and tell me what you think of this particular idea. Is it something that could ever bear fruit? Do you know if something like this has already taken place and I've just not seen it? That would be cool. Um, but for most workflows, I think just there hasn't been enough uh, universal. It would be so cool if somebody like Microsoft, but obviously not Microsoft, somebody just came along and said, hey, you know what? Here's an operating system. It's all in text mode. And occasionally, if you want to switch it up, you could switch on a graphical desktop to use things in a single screen, like a like YouTube, like you know, just apps like that. Or you could use a web browser in graphical mode. But and it, well, just whilst I'm on web browsers as well, I don't know what it is, but a lot of the websites that we consume aren't necessarily better with graphics. If we go and look at websites that like they used to be, or even um, looking at things like Gopher, it was actually pretty cool. Um, I quite liked the idea of Gopher, which had all the hyperlinks that we take for granted today, but it was all in text mode. And in fact, the very, very first version of the World Wide Web really didn't have images at all. So what's it like to well, use the World Wide Web without images? Is it too hard? Probably is the answer. But I've also seen ability to render graphics in line in the terminal using extra colored ASCII characters and stuff like that. So there is potentially a hybrid there as well. So I would love for somebody to come and tell me, hey, somebody's already done this and it's over there. But I think that's not the case yet. Love to hear what you think. Until next time, stay classy.